Welcome to another edition of the Invisible Wheelchair Podcast. I'm Donald Grodoff, family coach with FamilyOCD.com and FocusedHealthyFamily.com. In the Invisible Wheelchair Podcast series, I delve into the hidden characteristics of OCD, anxiety, and anxiety disorders. The things that most people don't see, that are behind closed doors, and shut within the mind about anxiety. My goal with these podcasts is to bring about awareness of Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, or OCD. Understand that I am not a doctor, therapist, or counselor, and the content, information, resources, and ideas that are talked about and brought up here in these podcasts are things that I have used, discovered, or have been recommended to me, and I always recommend to seek additional professional help in finding solutions for yourself. Thank you for listening, and enjoy the podcast. This podcast was recorded August 18th, 2017. This is podcast number 15 called OCD, Leave Us Alone. Well, we talked last podcast about ERP therapy, exposure response prevention, what I feel is one of the most effective methods and tools out there for OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. And one of the reasons that ERP is even needed is because of the uh, obsessive part of this disorder. OCD is a very powerful disorder, and ERP is a very powerful tool against that disorder. And one of the powerful parts of OCD is the fact that it doesn't give up easily just when you think that you are past it, it tends to want to come back with revenge. And I shouldn't say past it. Um, I really would even look at it as you're making steps and strides that are effective, that are helping to clear triggers, and OCD doesn't like that. Is And again, I say this in terms of, this is the way I addressed it a lot of times with my daughter uh, and with my kids when we were working on it, was it almost made it like OCD was a human, because it just, some of the characteristics of it just make it feel almost human, the way it comes back with revenge and what how powerful it is and the messages that it gives that sound so, so convincing, so powerful, that you know, the people that are going through it don't want to fight it because it's just too powerful. And so it, it never failed with my daughter that we would go through and be achieving some steps and getting through uh, a trigger when OCD would come back even the next day, you know, and hit hard to try to come back. It was almost like it was fighting us and resistance with ve- re- revenge or vengeance. Uh, I, I always kind of imagined it saying to us, no, 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 you cannot get past that. I'm not letting you. I'm coming back, you know. And so we, you know, we were constantly fighting that uh, in a way almost like a two steps ahead and one step back scenario. Luckily, those declined or decreased as we progressed with the work we did so that they got less and less and that they got less powerful or what I really believe was that my daughter got more powerful and more confident and more uh, strong to fighting that that the OCD became weak and couldn't really match her power and her strength. Um, So it, it many times almost seemed like it was regrouping, that it would retreat 
to regroup and come back stronger. Or it would um, it would come back with something different, a different angle at it, a different trigger at it, a, 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 a totally different aspect of it. And, um, and, and so it, like I said, it would almost act like it was retreating to regroup, come up with something different that would throw her off so that it could come back. And it, it was. At first, it was very hard to fight that comeback, and it would throw her back a little bit. Because, it, I mean, it would, it would, I could almost predict it like the next day. In fact, I, a lot of times I would, I would say, now, we've made some really strong, right? just understand that, you know, tomorrow or the next day, OCD might come back, and that you just have to be prepared for that, and just let it know that you don't want it back. You know, so, and that was easier said than done, but it was something that, uh, again, and one of the the thoughts I had, uh, this is totally my kind of theory on it, but it comes from the work that I do with with people, uh, with kids and with with people in the EFT and the Alpha Stem and the different work I do, is I know as I work through traumas with with people like I've worked with PTSD I've worked with rape victims and uh, people have been through some really heavy trauma and a lot of times it's trauma that was years ago uh, even when they were a child in fact I'm working with somebody right now that it it was major trauma from when she was in her teens and what I've learned from that and seen from that is that the mind after being in trauma for so long, the mind actually takes the trauma as the safe place. Almost as if the mind is saying, well, this is where this person has gone whenever they run into problems. So that must mean that it's a safe place for them or their safe place. And so I'm going to keep them in that because that my job as the brain, which is what it does, is to keep me safe. And so I'm deeming that that place that this person goes in trauma is a safe place. So they live in that anxiety. They live in that fight or flight. And the brain keeps them there because it believes it's protecting them by keeping her, that person safe by staying in that fight or fight place. And I think that's why the work I do is so effective because it starts to make the brain realize that that's not keeping them safe. That by doing that they're, they're getting sicker or they're, you know, they're more anxiety which isn't keeping their mind clear, which isn't keeping them safe. And I think that's almost where OCD can play a game in. It, it believes that that's the right place to be this is obsessive place, and so it takes it kind of almost as a safe place. I know that's a little off the off the chart, but that's just again my own thinking about how I um, how I saw it. And what was even more powerful about the leave us alone and the comeback was not only did it affect my daughter in the work she was doing and coming back while she's doing the work and when she's was finished and and one of the most powerful things that happened for her uh, one of the really strong things and this is what I think I talked about this when I talked about uh, the flooding uh, I've got an episode on flooding is this we had it happen to her where we we pushed it too far in our work that we were doing with the ERP and sent her to a place where everything was fine. In fact, we were celebrating that we made some big steps of her touching something that, and that was too big of a step for her. The next day is when everything fell apart and she went, literally went backwards. And so that was a big comeback by um, OCD. The other kind of big comeback is that we, we, you know, it took us a couple of years to get my daughter uh, into the, a better place, the, kind of the place that she's at now, uh, and and it's gotten better even from that. Um, but 
my youngest one went started going through the exact same well I shouldn't say the exact same thing uh, that's not necessary when the first time that it showed it it replicated the way my daughter would wash her hands and and go through her anxiety in the bathroom cleaning up um, but for him it morphed into something completely different and I'm going to it, it was something that was uh, much more unpleasant and much more harder con to control. It had to deal with going to the bathroom, and I won't go into details because I don't want to, um, you know, embarrass him in any way. But it was a whole different spectrum of the triggers that were involved, and and even a more complicated triggers that were not as easy to use ERP on even though we did and we we did make it we've been making it work he's actually still at this recording time um, still going through a few issues with it but we've we were luckily and 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 it came on with a bit of a vengeance uh, the OCD I guess it figured we weren't he wouldn't OCD wasn't going to get my daughter back so he'd go after my son but this time we knew quicker and faster what to do and how to approach it but like I said it took a whole different twist which put a little complexity onto it so it was we had to kind of rethink that also and um, the same thing would happen with him he would go through these steps and he'd go two steps forward and, and OCD would come back with a bit of a vengeance and he'd make a step backwards and so it was this constant 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 challenge that we'd have on getting past it and um, I think even uh, in the interview that I had with uh, Janet Singer with OCD talk she talked about that too it's a it's a tough thing you you get so you get you know take a couple of steps ahead and then it kind of throws you back some you think you're doing good progress and it goes and you are that's the tough part you always have to remember as you're going through it you are making progress even if it steps you back you're making progress and that's you gotta focus towards that progress and focus and celebrate that progress and so it, it um, so you know we're the other part about the the you know I talked about the safe brain and, and how uh, the safe place and you know what's happening with these comebacks is you know we make pathways in our brain that uh, for everything we do both happy and sad and traumatic and everything we have made pathways uh, neuro uh, neuro pathways up in our brain and so what we're doing with the ERP with the EFT with the the alpha stem we are actually repathing building bypasses by those old triggers and as we're building it those old triggers don't want to give up easily and so they resist and that's when the the comeback the the bounce back the revenge comes and um, it's important to keep going you know um, it's it, it's complicated a lot more complicated in the brain than that you know because the way I again the way I understand OCD is that you know the brain those neural pathways are firing and talking to each other and with OCD you know those messages go one way they go out to the next one the next one sends a message back it's received all that but what I understand in real simplistic terms is that you know those pathways fire but they also backwash into themselves and that's cause where the loops cause so it's important through these steps to keep positive encouragement you, you know I I would uh, say you know you are stronger than OCD you are more positive than OCD you have the love that OCD does not you know I think we, I've talked about in in previous podcast the idea of Voldemort and Harry Potter and what Harry Potter had that Voldemort didn't have and that is the love of his mother and that was the love that Voldemort didn't have well the love of my daughter the passion and, and lovingness of my daughter 
OCD doesn't have that and doesn't understand that. And so I would always encourage her by saying you have more power than OCD, you have more love, and the love is what's going to get you through this. You know, it's you know I would tell her OCD is as, as a sore loser, and um, and it is losing, and you're the one that's causing it to lose, and that's great. And we just got to keep pushing it because it's going to come back like a sore loser. So, like I said. I want to, in these podcasts, I want to be able to show hope. And that's kind of the, the overall message, that there is hope. It is treatable. And I'm more than willing and more than happy to be able to help you go through and get that, do that treatment, to be able to get you through this, because it's treatable and there's hope to it. So when, they, when it comes back with a vengeance... You can come back with a vengeance. You're the, the person who's suffering it can come back with a vengeance and say, No, I don't need this anymore. And you can fight back. And those returns and that vengeance will, will weaken over time the more you keep trying and keep pushing to get it done. So keep, keep going. Be in the hope. And know that it, it's treatable. And I... Wish you the best. Until next time. That concludes this podcast. Please leave me a comment or question below. That gives me good direction where to go on future podcasts. I would love to hear your Invisible Wheelchair stories if you're willing to share it. If you would, go to InvisibleWheelchair.com and click on Tell Your Story. I want to remind you that OCD, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, is treatable, and I can help you get past OCD. So, if you have heard this podcast and others, and you feel like you need further assistance and would like to spend some time with me working through any issues you have, then feel free to book a session at FocusedHealthyFamily.com or FamilyOCD.com. Or you can call me at 704-562-1630. I also offer $85 off initial discovery session if you mention that you heard it on this podcast. Finally, don't forget that there is a tapping recording that coincides with this podcast you may want to take advantage of. I hope you have enjoyed this podcast and will join me for the next one. Remember to keep tapping, talking, and transcending your life to new heights. Thank you, and have a great day.